Welcome back everyone. So today I'm doing my top 10 cooperative games of all time. Now I never made this video before because I don't want to say I'm not a fan of cooperative games. I do enjoy playing them, but they're not, I don't want to say they're prevalent on my list either because they there was one on my top 10 last year uh, for, for, the, for 2023. So I'm not going to give that away at the moment because it will be on this list, but it's not really my always my go-to because my problem with cooperative games is once it's done, I kind of get bored of it. If you if you beat it, that was my problem with Pandemic. Once I beat it, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. I don't want to play it ever again. And I I know that Pandemic is high on every uh, a lot of people's lists. It's a so well regarded game, and you know to each his own, but. There are cooperative games out there that I really do enjoy, and that's why I am making this list. I do own a lot of cooperative games, some that I haven't played yet. Um, hopefully, if they get to the table, I'll be doing reviews uh, reviews for them as well. But let's just get right into it now. So, number 10 of my top 10 cooperative games is Marvel United. Now, Marvel United is a... Uh, Game by Simon. It's pretty popular right now, and there's a bunch of content for it. I only have the base game and the X Men version. I would like to get a little more. It is a game that I would like to introduce to my son when he is older. It's because it's that fam it's that family way friendly. It is a little bit easy, but it's still a lot of fun to play. Very thematic. Uh, again, great family weight game. Lots of replayability, especially with all those expansions that are out right now. And I know there's a DC version coming out. I think I'm just going to stick with the Marvel game because I'm not much into... Again, I'm not into the cooperative thing, but Marvel United uh, would like to get more expansions for it. I think it's a great cooperative game that families should check out. Number 9. This is a unique cooperative game. This is a worker placement game called Atlantis Rising. Now, in this game, you're, everyone takes a different role, and you're essentially trying to es escape Atlantis. You're trying to rebuild this portal and get the people to safety, and while, meanwhile, the, uh, the city is collapsing. The game has a ton of replayability, which is what I liked about it, and the artwork is fantastic. Um, I have the, the, uh, the play map for it. I picked it up at PAX a couple years ago. And I really fell in love with the game when I started playing it because it really has that focus on cooperation. You need to work with everyone else to get it done. And we that first game I played, we lost at the very last second. It was very tense. And again, the fact that you can add the replayability to it and they just added a, an expansion. I think believe it's called Monsters or something. So I'll, I'll be looking forward to maybe trying to get my hands on that. But, uh, yeah, number nine, Atlantis Rising. Great game, should check out. Number eight is a dungeon crawler that was released, I believe it was two years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. And I finally got to the table uh, not too long ago, and I fell in love with it. This is Massive Darkness 2. So, with Massive Darkness 2, you and three up to three other people are going through this. This dungeon, there's different scenarios, fighting monsters, trying to complete the objective, searching through chests, yada, yada, yada. Again, what I, what I liked about it is that it's just, it feels unique in its way. I know the first one, I heard people had problems with it, and they fixed this one up a bit. And, man, it's one of the best dungeon crawls I have ever played. Um, look, it's a pain to get to the table because the setup is a little annoying. There's a, there's a lot of pieces. Uh, that's what, like with any Simon game. You know, the artwork is great. The, uh, the miniatures, you know, uh, are amazing. But just the, the gameplay itself, I, I found it to be very rewarding. And it's got, a, it feels a little bit like a exploration in a bit, which is what I like. And, of course, I want it to be challenging. And, again, it's a game that I haven't won yet. Probably a little embarrassed to say. But, still, I had a lot of fun playing it. That is my number 8, Massive Darkness 2. Number 7. As I'm actually still surprised it's still on this list. And I'm hoping 
really hoping to get it back to the table one day. Um, so this is a, a legacy style, <coughs> excuse me, style game that we had a fun time playing until COVID. And COVID pretty much screwed everything up for us. And we haven't played it since. And that's Gloomhaven. But the good thing about Gloomhaven is that there is an app version that you can play on Steam. Uh, I think it's also on the Nintendo Game Boy, uh, Switch, and uh, others. But yeah, again, a great dungeon crawler. One of the best out there. I'm not even going to bother with Frosthaven because one of these the boxes are so big. And who knows when I'll get done with Gloomhaven. I have Jaws of the Line right here that I haven't even started. But Gloomhaven is a unique experience that everyone should check out. Again, it do you don't have to get the board game and this that big box, putting it all together. It's really a pain in the ass and setting up. So if but again, if you're looking for playing with your friends, it's it's again it's a great experience. But if you're not looking to log that pay a hundred dollars for that game or more get the the app version it is just as good uh, and that's number seven gloomhaven number six is arkham horror the card game i love this game because it is so thematic uh so again you're playing as a pick an investigator it's a great solo game as well but it also makes a good co-op i would not recommend more than two I think more than two just gets to be a little too crazy. But, um, yeah, essentially your each scenario is going to be different. You're doing a different, have a different objective. And it is very challenging. It's not easy. And it's got that RPG element to it where you, you know, upgrade your character. Give them better weapons, better cards. And, you know, see how the scenarios play. Depending on how the scenarios play out, you will have a different ending for the character. And I, I love it. I want to get more stuff for it. I haven't tabled it in a while. Okay, it's been a little hectic over here. But it is an excellent card, uh, living card game. Again, when it comes to these games, it's going to be a little bit expensive. Um, you know, it, is it worth the money? I think it's worth it. You know, you don't have to spend it all at once. A little bit to get one box. Uh, what's not, And what's nice with uh, that Final Fantasy uh, Final... Uh, I forgot the name. What they're doing now is instead of having to buy all these scenarios, all the scenarios are just coming in one box, but the uh, characters that you want are going to be in a separate box, so you have to buy both. But you, again, you don't need to get that character box uh, if you don't want to. You could always use the character that you started with from the beginning. And again, each scenario, each, each box, different uh, chapter, I guess you would call it. They're going to have different investigators that, that come with it. But uh, yeah, just a fantastic game. One of the best out there. That's Arkham Horror, the card game. Number five is a game that I finally got off my shelf of shame after four years. Amazing how long it took me to get this game to the table. That is Mansions of Madness. So Mansions of Madness is in the same, uh, same world as Arkham Horror. You have pretty much the same investigators. But now this game utilizes an app that you can use on your phone or you put on the iPad or computer. And you're essentially you're searching a mansion or whatever uh, expansion that you have. And you, again, you have to complete the objective. You're being attacked by different monsters. You're using the app to uh, search for clues. Do this cl clue, uh, these little puzzles that you do on the app itself. And it, the game was just a lot of fun for me. I instantly loved it. To me, it's an instant classic. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting it back to the table as well. Again, the game has a bunch of expansions to keep that replayability going. Um, you know, one of the best cooperative games out there. I know there's a similar game, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Journey in Middle Earth. I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan, but if you are, I heard that they're almost the same. Don't take my word for it. But I, they both have that, use an, app, use an app to utilize the scenario. Uh, that is my number five, Mansions of Madness. Number four is another living card game, and that is Marvel Champions. Man, do I love Marvel Champions. Again, another game I would not recommend more than two. I think two is a sweet spot. But essentially, you pick a character. Uh, you can upgrade the deck yourself. You don't have, again, you don't have to 
spend points. So, so it's not a, there's no RPG element to it. You just have to, you know, each pack that you get comes with spare cards that you can use for other for other characters that you want to use. So like you can power up Spider Man, or if you have, um, I know I, I didn't get the last two expansions. I got to pick them up, but again, you can build the character up to your liking. You know, you pick a villain, you pick a scenario. And you go through it. And the game is not easy. It is hard. It's a lot of fun. And it's thematic. And that's why it is my favorite living card game. It's, I like it more than Arkham Horror. Uh, maybe mostly because of the theme. Even though I am a, I like a horror theme more than the comic book theme. In this case, I enjoy the Marvel theme a lot more. I just adore Marvel since I was a little kid. And... That's every Marvel Champions is everything Marvel in a box. It is that much fun. Again, I got to pick up the last two expansions. I haven't picked them up yet. But uh, yeah, a game that keeps on growing. I'm kind of hoping, really hoping that they add a, uh, a competitive mode with the Civil War. That would be interesting if they've ever released a Civil War expansion. But uh, anyway, my number four, Marvel Champions. Number three is a real-time game. And that is right over here, actually. That's Project Elite. So Project Elite is a real-time cooperative game, which pretty much feels like a, uh, like a first-person shooter video game. So you pick a character, you pick a scenario, and uh, you pretty much you have to you know do these objectives in real time. Now, on your turn, you're constantly rolling dice for like about two minutes and assigning these dice, attacking monsters, aliens. And moving al along the map, trying to complete that objective. Once that ends, all hell breaks loose, and these aliens just come in and start attacking you. It's a blast to play. I have yet to win one game. We almost won once at the very end, but then we got killed. But man, it is so intense. It's so much fun. One of the best cooperative games out there. That is Project Elite, and of course, it's from Simon. So you know the miniatures and everything else is gonna look awesome. Uh, so yeah, number three, Project Elite. My number two is also from Simon. You know, maybe we should call him the king of cooperative games. That is Cthulhu Death May Die. I finally got this game to the table last year, and it was incredible for me. It's an incredible experience because, one, I do love the horror theme. I love the whole Cthulhu uh, franchise i don't want to say franchise but because it's not like arkham horror it's um it's it's separate from arkham horror but the whole cthulhu lore and it's got that creepy feeling you know that, that you're going up against these cultists against these monsters and it's extremely hard again what i want from a cooperative game if i'm going to play a cooperative game i want it to be difficult but as difficult as it is it's also a ton of fun and I just adore that game. It is so much. It, it's so much fun. There's so many uh, boxes that you can get replayability. I know there's a bunch of expansions. I I feel maybe the base box is fine and it's all. I think there's like maybe two monsters in there, or two or three. I forgot. But again, you can mix them all up together, and it again, you, you it's gonna last a while. I know there's a new one coming out. Depending on how good it is, if I ever complete that, I'll probably sell that and get the new one. Uh, but yeah, number two, Cthulhu that may die. And number one is a game I played not too long ago. It is my favorite cooperative game. And that is Return to Dark Tower. Uh, it's not off screen, but wow, what an incredible game. So Return to Dark Tower is a remake of the 1981 board game. The, the board game itself was competitive. There is a competitive mode in here, but I, I, yeah, I don't think it's as fun as a cooperative, it's, it's, a, it's essentially a race to defeat the tower. So, you're in this game, you, again, it utilizes an app, but you pick your hero, you have your own location, and you're essentially trying to protect the buildings but while also completing a quest that brings out the main boss, and then you have to destroy the main boss. Now, you, you fail if somebody gets corrupted. So how do you get corrupted? If a building of yours gets destroyed, if you can't defeat a monster, then you're going to get a corruption card. When you get three corruptions cards, everyone loses. That's it. And the game is just so thematic. It's a lot of fun. It, and it, again, it, you, you really work as a team to complete that objective. I don't know where 
some people saying that this game was too easy. I have yet to win a game. But every game I've played has been awesome. It's been so much fun. Everybody I've played with had a good time with it. Um, again, the tower is cool. And it's not even gimmicky. It actually is an important part of the game. It connects with your phone with, blue, uh, with the Bluetooth. And, you know, the skulls start spitting out. Uh, it rolls, it's, it's just a really, it's an instant classic. And that's why it is my number one. So that was my top 10 cooperative games of all time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, have a great one, guys. Keep playing.